Okay, Abraham. Oh, wait. It was you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to talk about relationships. So my husband and I have been listening to you for about three and a half years now, and it's, it's completely changed everything in our lives together. And it's put us through, it's put me through specifically, a lot of <laughs> kind of roller coaster moments where, where I really want to defend like the old ways of you know making sure that he shows up the right way for me to be happy, and I know that he should. And then I and then he tells me Abraham said this, and then I tell him, well, that's kind of stupid in this situation. <laughs> so, he thought that you were the perfect one to follow our friend. <laughs> And so where we are right now is I think we're doing a really good job of owning that we individually, I am the only person responsible for my well-being. I am the only person responsible for my alignment, period. So take that even to a more specific statement. I am the only one responsible for how I feel. I am the only one responsible for how I feel. And so when you have two people come together that are both intending to live by that, how do you make relationship agreements that work for both people? It works really well if each of you makes your first primary most significant and enduring relationship with your respective inner beings and then your second relationship is with one another one of the things that is really delicious is when you have the same inner being so you're both making your primary relationship with that which is at the core of you then the rest of it follows easily and that's the case so we remember, we remind ourselves and each other sometimes when we're navigating some friction that someone who's in alignment isn't a nuisance to the people around them. When we are navigating some delicious friction that is causing the expansion of that which is us, let's put this friction into the proper place. That it's not between us, it's between me and myself. Yeah, or yeah, and it's beneficial. It's beneficial. It's hard to feel like it's beneficial sometimes. <laughs> We don't understand that at all. <laughs> Sometimes you have to step back a little bit to remember that it is always beneficial. And sometimes you have to get down the road of manifestation a little bit before you see the evidence of its benefit. What about when one person's really aligned, they feel lit up by something and then the other person isn't, they're feeling really triggered. How do you come to a healthy agreement in that space? Is it leave the subject alone, get aligned individually and then come back together? Absolutely. It doesn't always have to be this way. Eventually, you could chew it over together if you are really aligned in the understanding of how it works. So resonance with your inner beings is your dominant intention in any moment, no matter what the subject is. But before that is the case, then anything that you can do to allow yourself an easy turning your attention toward Jesus said, turn the other cheek. And that's exactly what he was talking about. Because you know from all of the experiences that you've had, not just with this partner, but with so many in so many different situations in life, is that when you have that friction or that disagreement and you approach someone about you're needing them to understand you and think more the way you're thinking rather than the way that they are thinking. It activates within them all of the momentum that they've gathered along the way. It activates the very resistance right before your eyes. So they're resistant and then you're resistant and then they're resistant and then you're resistant. And during that, it's not a terrible thing because both of you are launching rockets of desire and there is benefit down the road. But for that moment, that negative emotion that you are experiencing because of the conversation that you're having with each other lets you know that your inner beings are in a different place. That's all you need to know. We understand how it's not easy for a physical human couple who has been practicing the idea that we're coming together and I will love, honor and cherish you no matter how rotten you are to me forever, ever and ever and ever and ever. We know that you've practiced that sort of thinking about one another. And so it's not easy for you to say, you come second. I love you so much. And you are the second most important being in my life. And they say, wait, I want to be the most important being in your life. And you say, second is good <laughs> because what's most important is me being whole so that I'm 
in tune with all that I am. Because if I'm in tune with all that I am and I'm focused upon you, oh, you're really going to like that. But if you make you be more important than that, then I may not be all of me focused upon you. And nobody wants that. Do you have any insights about when you're, say there's something time sensitive that's coming up and you're kind of feeling out of alignment, but you only have a small amount of time to get into alignment or to make it, does that make sense? Like sometimes I feel like I, it's easy to do this when it's a subject where there's no time sensitivity. We understand what you mean by time sensitivity and people call those deadlines uh -huh. for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> and so sometimes this time sensitive deadline can serve to focus you and so it's productive and beneficial for you but often it sets you off your game it puts stress and worry within you gives you less opportunity to align with the clarity and the wholeness that is you and then you miss the beneficial steps that are sequenced to you and are fed to you by your inner being and so the remedy for that is rather than pinpointing it, rather than getting more focused upon the thing that is causing you the stress is to step back as best you can into a more general attitude. Let's calibrate this together. So give us the scenario. What's the scenario? The time sensitive scenario. Oh, a very specific one. Okay. Well, uh, if you want. So my husband wants to take a trip with people that I'm just, it, it's, it's a relationship that I'm not really comfortable with. I'm not comfortable with it because. Cause it, it's, it's a little unconventional for what I believe a relationship should look like. I know that's not very leading edge. <laughs> it's not even in the ballpark, <laughs> but it's all right. You get to want what you want and you get to feel how you feel and you get to have what you want. And we don't get to tell you, nobody gets to tell you. And it's right that you want what you want, but every minute you spend justifying why you want what you want, you hold yourself apart from your inner being who is not asking you to justify your inner being is not pushing against anything. And when you do, then you let go of so much of your leverage and advantage. So the scenario you've stated clearly, someone that I love wants me to do something that I don't want to do. So therefore I feel, what are some of the emotions that you feel? Ooh, uh, I feel on the spot. I feel taken advantage of. Betrayed, I feel pressure. Pressured. I feel stress. I feel frustration. I feel there's another emotion. What is it? I feel abandoned misunderstood abandoned betrayed that's it i feel betrayed i feel like he's putting something else first uh-huh yikes <laughs> so tell him off oh we're, we're telling, telling you off <laughs> but when we said yikes we just had a conversation about you putting your inner being first and here you are sort of in this shortage consciousness attitude of who's first who's first i feel abandoned because you want to do something that i don't want to do you're looking for love in all the wrong places you're looking for stability in all the wrong places you get your stability from your inner being not from wherever it is he wants to go and we think it's a good idea not to go until you're all shored up so that's why we want to calibrate with you a little bit here you have the picture you know what the situation is and we know how you feel and it's not wrong that you feel that way I want to be very clear with you about that you're not wrong to feel that way but it isn't good for you to not feel good and we want you to feel good we want you to find a way of feeling good and we want you to find a way of feeling good without feeling like you have to cave in and do something that somebody else wants you to do that you don't want to do or asking them to cave in it's so interesting so many people want somebody else to sacrifice what they want in order for you to have what you want so sacrifice is in the air when what's happening is everybody's sacrificing their connection to source and blaming each other the only thing that you don't want to sacrifice is your relationship with source and that's why it's so hard sometimes to have human relationships because that's sort of the name of the physical game of relationships how much are you willing to sacrifice for me? Isn't it kind of the way humans roll? Oh, 
You do all the things I want you to do. You must really love me. And therefore I'm happy here. And we say, enjoy it. Cause it's going to be a short time because <laughs> that's not the basis of a lasting relationship. So we've got that side of the page pretty well established and we spent too much time pinpointing it, <laughs> but because we're really sure that we can calibrate otherwise we pinpointed it longer than is necessary because almost everybody in the room has a similar relationship in other words this is a good conversation do you agree yeah. so now let's get on the other page let's get on the source energy side of this let's get on the inner being side of this let's get on the what we really want to calibrate to all the time side of that we want to calibrate not only to our inner being but we want to calibrate to who we have become in this relationship that our inner being is that in this moment we are not in other words you're making a decision of calibrating to what you want rather than to what you don't want you're making a decision to calibrate to the solution rather than to the problem you're making the decision to calibrate to your first priority rather than your second priority now we know this is tough love that we're giving you but you can't have a good relationship with any of your human friends if you don't have an intact relationship with your source energy you just can't have it you just can't have it it's like having nothing to give and hanging around to each other in emptiness trying to fill the void with each other and not able to do it again pinpointing too much so now we're on the other side of the page and so you make the statement however this situation caused me to calibrate to betrayal that was the most poignant emotion that came out of it betrayal now I'm gonna focus here with my inner being I've cleared my mind a little bit and in this space you can do this and I ask myself the question am I betrayed on a regular basis or am I honored which is it honored for sure for sure unequivocally in other words you didn't even have to think about that once you got this subject not pinpointed out of focus once you got this subject out of focus you know am I honored or betrayed am I taken advantage of or am I blessed am I blessed or am I disadvantaged which is it blessed I'm so blessed am I worried about things or am I exhilarated and eager about the unfolding of my life experience usually exhilarated and eager all right so now the usually indicates that you were looking back over there for a bit and you're wanting to speak the truth usually I'm here but because of the stupid stuff he's doing I'm not there right now but your question was just are my you am I am I we want you yes. to turn the other cheek yeah. and connect to <laughs> not that cheek and acknowledge who you really are and what you really know and take the time to tune to that to tune to that to find the resonance with that to fill up with that to fill up with all of that because when you fill up with that knowing of how blessed you are then all that petty and we are not pointing that at you we're pointing it at anyone who's disconnected from the fullness and the power of the energy that creates worlds this is a leverage that is indescribable and so many people are shortage consciousness focused for a good reason they have been pinching themselves off from the abundance and resources and all they know is some sort of shortage but if on a regular basis as things like this come up and you calibrate to who you really are again and again and again and again and again it doesn't take too much of that before you're so steadily calibrated there that those things don't even raise a little blip on your radar at all because you know who you are you're steady who you are 